Hi, welcome to Copyright and Publishing. This is part two, Open Access. If you have not already watched part one, I suggest you go back and watch that first. As a refresher, my name is Tabitha Octero. I am the Electronic Resources Librarian here at Malloy College. I am also the administrator for both the Digital Commons at Malloy and the Expert Gallery Suite. I am a lot of things. I have a lot of certificates, but I am not a lawyer, so I cannot give legal advice. Just as in part one, I spoke about a very specific aspect of US copyright and publishing. In part two, I am focusing on open access and publishing. Open access is the free, immediate, online availability of research articles combined with the rights to use these articles fully in the digital environment. I got that definition directly from Spark. Spark is the Scholarly Publishing and Academic Resource Coalition. They have been working to make the default open for research and education. Typically, when someone says open access, they are referring to works like articles, books, images, music. There are other segments of the open access movement, including open educational resources. These are things that are created specifically for educators. And there is another caveat with open educational resources. Um, called the five R's. This is retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. So usually when something is labeled as an open educational resource, you can also have those five R's along with it. And there is also open data. Open access is not the same as available online. It's not the same as free online and it is also not the same as freely available online. So just because you found something online does not mean that it's open access. When talking about open access, copyright, and publishing, it's helpful to view it as a spectrum of rights. So copyright is all rights reserved, and that is at one end of the spectrum. And that means that any reuse requires the permission from the copyright owner. If you worked on a dissertation, you should be familiar with that process. Say that you found a tool or a chart or something that you wanted to put in your dissertation. You had to contact the copyright owner to get permission. Sometimes the copyright owner is the creator Sometimes for published works, it is the publishing company. On the other end of the spectrum is the public domain. The year is 2019, so currently anything that was published before 1923 is in the public domain. This is also known as no rights reserved, and the item may be used without permission. These are typically things that were either published before 1923, um, published some area between 1923 and 1989, but the copyright expired. It could also be things that the creator decided they're just going to put it in the public domain. In the middle are Creative Commons licenses, and a good hint that something is actually open access and not just a free thing you found on the internet is that it will have a Creative Commons license. Since it's in the middle, you can view it as some rights reserved. Reuse is permitted without permission under the specifications shared in the license. So there are six licenses, six Creative Commons licenses. This chart is also available on the Digital Commons LibGuide, and I have the URL at the top of the slide working my way down. So starting at the top, this is the most open of the Creative Commons licenses. It is CC BY. BY is attribution. 
the person can read the article, share the article, view the article, print it out, do whatever with it, um, as long as they give you credit. That's what attribution is. Next is attribution and share alike. So the permitted uses are they can read it, view it, share it. They have to give you credit. And if they were to create a derivative work from your work, they have to share it also. So say I created an image. Somebody else sees this image. I have the license CC by SA on it. And they tweak the image. They now have to share their image and it has to also be shared with a CC by SA license. That's what that license means. Next is CC by ND, which is attribution, no derivatives. They have to give you credit. They cannot create a new work from your work. Next is CC by NC, attribution, non-commercial. They have to give you credit and they cannot use your work for any commercial purposes. I'm going to swing back to that one in a second. Next is CC by NCSA, attribution, non-commercial, share alike. So this one is similar to the second license, CC by SA. They have to give you credit. They cannot use it for a commercial purpose. And if they create a new work from yours, they have to give it the same license. So they'd have to give their new creation a CC by NCSA license. The most restrictive of the Creative Commons licenses is CC by NC and D. Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives. They have to give you credit, they can't make money off of it, and they cannot create a new work from your work. Swinging back up to CC by NC, there has been a recent trend of big name publishers and vendors creating aggregators, which are essentially search engines for open access works. So these companies, I know for a fact Sage has one and EBSCO has one, there's probably others, are creating a product that they are then charging schools and institutions money for that allows educators to search for open access works. And I'm not saying anything bad about it. This is just a fact. These are a, this, it's a thing that's happening. And I can see where they're coming from. They're trying to make life a little bit easier for faculty members who have a lot on their plate. However, there are creators who are not okay with this because when they created their work, they threw a CC BY or a CC BY ND license on it because they wanted it out in the world and they wanted to share their knowledge and their work and they wanted other people to use it. And now you have these big publishing companies who are taking that work, which they are allowed to do given the license it was given, and making money off of it. And that does not sit well with some. Um, it doesn't quite sit well with me. So my license of choice right now in 2019 is CC by NC because that means that anything that I create and put out there, somebody has to give me credit for, and they cannot use it for commercial purposes. I will get off my soapbox now and talk a little bit more about the permissions granted by these licenses. And here's a nice handy chart. And I got this chart. You can see the URL down at the bottom because I cited it because I did not create this. And this chart has a CC license of by SA. So I'm giving them credit. It was created by Footer. I have the link. And this is traditionally, traditionally what a citation for an open access uh, work looks like. This chart is also available on that Digital Commons LibGuide. The URL is at the top. And if I were to create something new from this chart, I would also have to share it and I would have to give it a CC by SA license because those are the terms of the license. So for every license on the left hand side, you can see check marks with things that you are allowed to do and X's in places where you are not allowed to do that thing. 
if you would like more information or want to see those two charts again, remember they are at the malloy.libguides.com, Digital Commons and Expert Gallery Suite LibGuides. You can also find more information on the Scholarly Publishers Toolkit LibGuide. If you want to revisit copyright, you can go to Copyright Basics LibGuide or straight to the U.S. Copyright Office's website. This concludes Copyright and Publishing Part 2, Open Access. You can see down at the bottom right, I have labeled this presentation with a BY-NC license, like I said I would. Thank you.